What's going on, everybody? You know who it is. This is Austin, and this is the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about real estate and we talk about lifestyle. Today's guests, I'm glad I got the chance to bring them on. They are a heavy hitter in the game, and they have 20 plus years of experience. And the main reason why I wanted to bring this individual on is because 2019 is right around the corner. And for those individuals that are either looking to take their business to the next level, or if they're just looking to start, today's episode will give you everything that you need to get the ball rolling. And today's guest does an excellent job of giving some actionable steps that you can take the moment that the episode ends. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you have benefited by listening to the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, if you received any value by listening to the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, please log on to iTunes, leave me a rating and review. I would greatly appreciate that as we continue to share the message and share the sugar. And if you or anybody that you know can benefit by coming on to the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, please let me know. Let's get them on the show. Gal, guy, does not matter. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the show. What's going on, everybody, today on the show? I am so excited to bring this particular guest on. I did have to chase her down a little bit because she does have an extremely busy schedule and she's extremely involved in the community. So I know it was going to take some work to get her on the podcast, but I'm gladly, I'm I'm actually extremely excited and I'm glad that she actually took the time to come and uh, talk to us on the show here. She is the CEO of Rose Capital, which is a real estate development, investing, property management, construction management firm. She does a lot inside the communities. She's also the host of the Rose Mosley show on Facebook, which you can find on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. I've joined. I've seen a couple of the shows. It's amazing. She's really an educator. It's uh, it's a show that's uh, also on invest in development, community education, landlord tenant education, things like that. And uh, she also holds in person education classes throughout the month. Ladies and gentlemen, you already heard her name, Rose Mosley. Rose, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you. That is an awesome intro. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really <laughs> humbled by that. <laughs> no, I greatly appreciate you taking the time. And we're going to jump right into this because I know you got a real hectic schedule, but I want to bring all your expertise out for everyone that's listening right now. We'll start off just like this. Rose, how did you get started? I mean, you're, you're a mogul now. You're, you're an entrepreneur, a businesswoman now. How did you get started? Were you always in this realm or? Well, you know, uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty interesting story. I graduated high school in, uh, late nineties and, um, you know, I did a year of college, and I just it, I felt like it wasn't for me because I always had been working even through high school. And when I came home um, from college to my mom's, saw this guy driving all these cars, these fancy cars at church, and I was just like, well, what does he do? And uh, he introduced himself. My mom introduced us, and he was like, he does real estate, construction, all this other stuff. I was like, I want to get in. I want to I want to do what you do. So uh, he asked my mother if he could sponsor me to go to real estate school. And ever since I've been in, since the age, since 1998, I got my license. So it's been a a long journey, but that was really it. I just was thirsting for something. I saw someone that was successful at it, and I just had to duplicate it. So then I went on to having my first investment at 21 years old in uh, Philadelphia, and that just really changed the whole world for me being a landlord. So 
that's really my start, and it's been just like that ever since. So 1998, so we're talking 20 years in the game. Mm -hmm. you, you've mm -hmm. seen it all, but, uh, you know, there's one thing that you mentioned, uh, which is kind of like the, you know, the core topic of, of this particular show, but you mentioned modeling and, and that you, you saw someone doing it, you modeled them, and then you've eventually experienced the same kind of fruits of your labor. Kind of talk about the mindset shift that you had to have because, I mean, you're doing this at 21. So, I, don't, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, probably, you know, myself, I was probably somewhere in college um, mm -hmm. partying somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's... it's right, right. It's a <laughs> so, different frame. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. you so know, I had some of that, too. Yeah, I had some of that, too. Um, as an agent, you know, I came across a deal. I worked... Um, some mentors in my office at that time, they allowed me to, uh, they put together a deal for me, you know, help me get the funding, you know, put me in place with the proper people, mortgage wise and such. And, you know, next thing you know, I was going to closing on, on my first property, um, had to do about $10,000, $12,000 worth of renovation. So it was all nervous, real money, real cash. It was like, and those were just from my commissions that I saved, you know, so, I really put it all in there. You know, I, I was, I remember sitting on a step like this better work. <laughs> right. And, and, uh, you know, um, I had the, you know, the proper mentors around me, people around me that, you know, had been more experienced than me. And they just saw that I, my work ethic was just like, I'm always going to show up. Rose always shows up, you know? So when they started to see that, they started to sh share some jewels and gems along the way. And, you know, I just kind of was very, trying to be very coachable, you know, the mind shift was just different because I'm the only um, entrepreneur in my family, my immediate family. So, you know, the mind shift had to be a little bit different than just wanting to get a job and be employed and have a boss. You know, when you get a taste of receiving rent at 21, um, you know, and then being responsible in a different way that, that you didn't even think about that most people around you aren't. You know, it just starts, you, you start to feel comfortable in your space. It starts off being a fish out of water, but then after a while, you, you know, I, I, of course I can say it now, 20 years in, you know, this is just the lane that was for me. You know, you gotta know what, what's for you at some point and, and never quit, you know, like follow people, you know, learn from them and then, you know, just kind of keep going, you know, because we see the results, but sometimes we don't see all of the work that goes into the, p the number of years of, ups and downs and sacrifices that go into um, any career path that you choose, you know? I love that you mentioned that because I think passion is a, a very important element because that makes you want to show up. And like you mentioned, you know, Rose always shows up, Rose always shows up. And it's just like day by day, you get one new gym or one new, you know, new plan of direction or one new, you know, action step. And over time, all those things have, you know, eventually built up. And then next thing you know, you have a brick wall of success, you know, that's right in front of you just by showing up each and every day. Because that, you know, and that leads me to, you know, one of the questions, like, why don't some people get started? You know, like, we, we, we all know those individuals. They're, they've, they've read all the books. They've, they've seen all the podcasts. They know how to speak the lingo. But for whatever reason, they don't take that first step. What do you think is, if you could label it to one thing, if you can, what do you think is like one uh, thing that's keeping them back from just taking the action? It's just a fear of rejection or the fear of the unknown. You know, we don't like to get told no, but it doesn't kill us, you know. And I think that you get stronger in this business or any industry that you're pursuing as far as your passions and you know, you get stronger the more no's you hear, you know, that, that actually gets me excited now when I hear no's, I'm like, okay, no, it's just not a, right now, but then I move on to the next client, you know? So it's just people be, being afraid, it's their own level of confidence. You know, if, if anything else, I'm telling you, God gives us all the tools to accomplish everything. Sometimes we don't even need anything else or anyone else, but it's us activating ourselves you know so overcoming fear i think would be the biggest uh the biggest obstacle the first step love it love it let's switch gears here we got the individual and even you know investors now like the you know one of the biggest struggle is finding deals and a lot of people you know and we'll talk about uh you know finding deals and funding um but it's the two-part monster i can't find any mm -hmm. deals and not only that i don't have any money 
and um, you know those are like the two big. So like you know to your point, the fear it, it like it starts from there. Like I don't know how to find deals, or I don't have any money to invest, so I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines. And um, you know it, it, we all know that couldn't be further. You know that's the farthest from the truth. What do you you know? What are some of your favorite ways to find new deals? What are your favorite ways to find new properties? What are you doing nowadays? Uh, you know, I assist a lot of people with foreclosure prevention. So my main niche right now is just targeting people that are, you know, heading into foreclosure. Um, but, you know, I feel like as investors, you should always be branding yourself because word of mouth deals, have places of worship. You know, people should kind of know that you're in the game. Um, so maybe having a business card and just always representing yourself as an investor opposed to a wholesaler. Wholesaler really has like a negative connotation in my circle. Um, but as a, as an investor, you know, you have the opportunity to take advantage of more things, more opportunities, um, how to get the money, you know, it's a trifecta approach. I tell people, I call it the rose trifecta if I may. Um, you know, I tell people to really assess how much cash on hand that they actually have, whether it's 3000, I mean, liquid cash, you know, cash you can actually go touch or, or deposit, I mean, or withdraw from a bank, you know, so it could be anywhere, 1500, 3000, 10,000, whatever it is. Be real with yourself on that. And even if it's partnerships, just be real with the true liquid cash number. That's number one. Number two, you know, making sure that you can qualify for some level of hard money. Um, I think that's an underserved um, or underutilized tool because hard money, you can take some of the cash that you have and leverage it for a hard money loan to just get into a deal. Don't be so caught up on fees and this, that, and the thing because there's a cost of doing business. So, Period. And then the third part of the trifecta is just, you know, getting also uh, qualified for some type of mortgage, whether uh, mortgage is going to be more than likely used in any exit strategy when you're dealing with cash and home and uh, hard money loan. And a mortgage will come and play with a refinance, which is maybe 80% of the, of the value of the property when you're completed the renovation. Or a mortgage is going to come from that new buyer when you fix up the property. So mortgage is traditionally an exit strategy. Um, so I tell my clients to always have all three, cash on hand, hard money, and soft money is what I call it, which is a mortgage. And having those three and being pre a little pre-qualified in those three areas could really put you in a position to act fast when deals do come come about. I, I love that. And it was, it was probably so meaty that I'm pretty sure I went over a couple of individuals' heads. <laughs> but, but, you know, and I... and They'll I could play that. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely understand. But, you know, for for those that are listening, um, uh, when individuals are participating in these deals, so if you're finding a property that, say, is a multifamily, and what Rose is talking about is your two exit strategies when you're going to hard money lenders... Um, they want to at least be able to see at least two extra strategies, which probably are the only two extra strategies. But um, those two strategies where, okay, if you're locked into the deal, you rehab this multifamily, what are your extra strategies? You, you can flip it or you can refinance into a previous or an existing conventional or FHA loan like you normally would on a regular purchase. Um, so that's what Rose is talking about. The... Like the interesting part about it is, you know, you mentioned one thing, the, you know, starting off, hey, if you're an investor or, hey, listen, if you're thinking about doing this, if you don't, you know, if you're gonna not going to be spending money on marketing, if you don't have, a, you know, a ton of connections, like you said, God puts you in the position where everything that you need is right in front of you. And it's mm -hmm. as simple as taking those business cards and even the organizations or even your, your small pockets of networks that you're in, just letting people know that, hey, listen, I'm an investor. Hey, listen, I'm buying houses. If you know anyone that's looking to sell, please let me know. And just starting from there and you'd be surprised, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you'd be surprised at the momentum that you build up. And, and just like you said, word of mouth business. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, just having cars, you know, also another good way to really leverage is getting, going to a lot of networking events. You know, I have the um, New Jersey Real Estate Investors University, which I run classes at least three, four times a month at my office. And, um, you know, it's a great networking opportunity because you meet other investors, you know, that make 
turn into a JV. Uh, you know, I have funders there, attorneys, architects, you know, just building a team, a network, because um, some people are just service-based, so then they'll refer business to you. They'll, like, really, you know, say, hey, look, I, I just inspected this house, and, you know, they're actually losing it, and blah, 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 blah. And you'd be surprised on how deals can just turn and really be organic like that. So, um, you know, just always be closing. You know, I tell always have a contract or access to a contract. And, um, you know, you can always get a deal right there on the spot. It sounds aggressive and it sounds absurd, but it's very real. So It's so real. I just uh, I unloaded um, a, a 10 unit building and the the individual like he was in my office and he's like, hey, listen, you know, my dad uh, owned this 10 unit building and i'm looking to sell do you know anyone that's looking to buy so i went over there and it's like the creme de la creme of what an investor is looking for like completely distressed mm-hmm. needs complete renovation you know what i mean and you know and mm-hmm. obviously this was right in north and the individual was writing my office you know like i didn't do any fancy marketing i wasn't you know on instagram with one hundred and twenty thousand followers and and somebody brought me you know this was just over casual right. conversation in the office and then look what it turned into right. the right. So for so give a, for 2019 because I want to uh, as we you know start our descent a little bit and before we go into the core four for 2019 and individuals that are looking to either build a business become their own boss have another opportunity as far as you know escaping the nine to five grind or maybe they just want to you know do something different. For 2019, mm-hmm. you know, it's January 1. What mm-hmm. <laughs> what could be, because I try to give actionable steps so people just, like, right. they don't have to think about it. It's just, here's the action. What, mm-hmm. or over the course, here, I'll frame it like this, over the course of January to, to set off a good momentum for at least the first quarter, what should a new investor be doing or even an experienced investor that's just looking to take their business to the next level, what should be they should be doing over the course of January to set the tone for 2019? Listen, the best thing that I that I do and the way to start the year off, you got to build up momentum, right? So if you're really serious about this, part time, full time, whatever, if you're really serious about this, you definitely have to commit to. Um, making calls and going to see people. I mean, these people, let's say if you're targeting distress list, you know, I'm still old school. I actually go view. I actually still will go to the house or send out a letter or, you know, but I definitely, I still go to the house. So constantly looking at things like opportunities, like a scratch off, just keep going, going, going. And it might, you might get a hundred no's, but someone may call you back from the work that you did in January and in March, you know, it's all this planning seeds. So definitely be in a position where you just keep cold calling, keep reaching out to people, keep putting yourself in the position, letting people know that you're an investor, just keep planting those seeds. So that way when the summer comes, you have people circling back to you, you've given six months of branding yourself, and you really start manifesting what you're working on. That's, that's my overall uh, advice for 2019. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's jump yep. into the core four, which are the four questions that I ask each and every guest on the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast. Rose, you've been dropping gems, but the reason why I usually do ask these questions is for people to get a chance to know you as okay. Rose the individual and not so much as Rose the mogul, even though I know it's hard to kind of separate the two. <laughs> the first question, what is your favorite aspect about real estate? Um, my favorite aspect about real estate is really um, just helping people. I mean, giving them an opportunity to avoid a foreclosure. And then in that, the new person that's buying it, right, they're actually uh, maybe the ones that's buying a house for the first time. And just those two things, preventing a situation and then also allowing an opportunity happening at the same time, that's so rewarding for me. Super, super rewarding for me. Love it. Question number two, what is your favorite personal or business development book? Oh, uh, one of my favorite books right now, I'm actually reading To Build an Empire, Building an Empire. 
So, uh, that, that's, that's, okay, I'll have to, yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's pretty a pretty good book. Yeah, you should Google. Yeah, I'm about I don't to, recall, to write it down. I don't have you know the author, author on my tongue right now, but yeah, I'll figure it out. Is, is it something that if you put it in, like building an empire book, it's like the number one, like the only book with that particular title? Yes. Okay. So I'll be able to find it on Google. Building an Empire. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Checkmate. Yeah, Brian Brian Crothers. Even better. That works. Question number three. When you're not out putting deals together, when you're not helping people stay in their homes and prevent foreclosure, what are the fun things that you like to do in your spare time? Uh, I'm a foodie, so I like going out to all the, like good food, low-key food restaurants, Um Love to travel. Just got back from Cali this weekend. Um, you know, so I just like to travel and eat good food and just chill, spend time with my family and friends. You know, just kind of disconnect because it's such a grind. You know, my schedule is like almost eight to eight. <laughs> so sometimes when I when I take a couple, I take a couple of days off at a time and you know really just travel and and, and just kind of disconnect. The, you know, a big portion of my podcast, you know, obviously it's about real estate, but the other half of it is lifestyle. And the main reason why is because, at least for me, one of the reasons why I got into the biz and into the grind was to be able to build a lifestyle business. And, you know, one that, you know, can serve around your time, although there is no time when you're in the grind. And, you know, but at least you have that opportunity where you can say, okay, let me put this on pause. Let me go take care of myself, take care of family. Okay, now I'm back in the grind. And, you know, people, if you, well, we'll get into question number four and then that'll, you know, Rose will let us know where she can find us at. But um, when you see her profile, she exhibits exactly that, the daily grind, but at the same time making sure that she doesn't let life pass her by just because she's in the grind and taking the time to pull her head above water, you know, and experience life travel. And uh, it's, it's definitely inspiring. So question number four, Rose, where can people find you at? Well, people can follow me at uh, Rose Capital on Facebook. Uh, But really, if you want to plug into my system of classes and workshops and events, definitely go to meetup.com and you can look for my uh, New Jersey Real Estate Investors University. It's a a page and I have probably right at three pages, but that's the main one. And um, I have currently over 1,900 uh, rosebuds, as I call them on there. So if you want to become a rosebud and plug into the system and learn more in depth on how to get deals, how to get funding, grant money, prevention, you know, property management, all the things that he mentioned, you just sign up to New Jersey Real Estate Investors University. We have a class this Saturday, tomorrow at 10 a.m., December 8th uh, at 456 Washington Street in Newark, New Jersey. So you can come on out for that and uh, just stay connected on social media. Awesome. Rose, thank you so much for taking the time today. The listeners definitely got some gems and just some actionable steps. Like they don't have to go from A to Z, just go from A to B and you will begin to turn your business around. Thank you so much for taking the time. I greatly appreciate you, Rose. Thank you for having me. Have a blessed holiday. You as well. You as well. Enjoy. Enjoy.